Lenta. My research topic is biochemical profile of freshwater fishes from Nakana Lake, Dhule. Uh, fishes are quite different from the other animals' food source because it, it provides high quality proteins, calories, all amino acids and some vitamins that is A, D, K. It is palatable. Objective of my study is to estimate the dietary values of fishes to mention variety in their nutritional combinations, to detect dietic significance in between commercially important and small indigenous fishes. The study area, Nakana Lake is a man-made lake which uh, built on the Panzara River from British period. Uh, it is placed in the West Khandesh, belong to North Maharashtra region. Actually, the main purpose of behind the construction of this lake uh, the supply of the uh, water to the Dhule city, uh, then uh, irrigation to nearby farms, and uh, before two to three decades, it is used for aquaculture. The map showing study area. <coughs> During the research tenure, variety of fishes has been observed. Total 20 fishes, fish species were reported uh, for the biochemical analysis which is distributed in five orders. Appropriate amount of uh, entire body weight tissue of fishes was taken. Tissue was homogenized, and the supernant was used for the estimation of the glycogen, lipid, protein, and the moisture. Six observations were made, and mean and standard deviation were calculated. The study tenure is February 2016 to January 2018. Glycogen, protein, lipid, and moisture determined by the Miller, uh, Lowry, Jairaman, and Anonymous method. These are the fish species which are observed from the Nakana Lake. Now, the estimated values are uh, put into the table, table number one. The highlighted colors are used for the glycogen, protein, lipid, and moisture. In the present investigation, the higher uh, glycogen content is present in uh, Chanapang Tata, that is 6.55, then Cyprinus Scarpio, that is 6.20, and the Mustia Sembolus Armatus, that is 6.5. The wild minimum in Parambesis Ranga, Rasbora Doniconius, and the Puntius Sapphor. The higher content of the protein is occurred in a uh, tenulisha elisha that is 22.85 then uh, mustard sembolus armatus that is 21.15 in a chanapang data it is uh, the content of the protein is 20 to 20.15 and the remaining uh, the least content of the uh, protein occur in a mistus blickeri heprot mistus fossilus and uh, glossy gurius gurius the maximum percentage of lipid shown in a tenulisha elisha again that is 9.45 and the, it is followed by mustard sembolus armatus that is 7.90 and after that chana pangtata that is 5.90 and the least count of the lipid content in a chandanama oreochromis mosambicus and umpak bonaculatus the estimated percentage of the moisture ranges in 83.20 to 45.10 in fish, Parambesis ranga, Animostra sembolus armatus. In nutshell, Tenulisha ilisha, Mustra sembolus armatus, and Chana pangdata are the nutritious fishes are as compared to other 17 fish species. Tenulisha ilisha is a um, small indigenous fish. Mostasemus armatus is a commercially important fish and the Chanapangtata is exotic fish. Uh, after that, this biochemical estimation, uh, Nakana Lake, no doubt Nakala Lake is harbor, the very nutritious and enormous fishes, but some anthropogenic activities are uh, happened here. Uh, due to the 
these anthropogenic activities, the content of the combination of the biochemical analysis of the fishes are changed. At the time of Ganesh Chaturdashi and Vijayadashmi, the huge, uh, huge idol of the Lord Ganesha and Madurga immersed into the Nakana Lake. The crowd is uh, Generally, fish quality depends upon the biochemical composition of the whole body, which is relieving the decline energy reserves and storage of the energy. Hence, their assessment is uh, their uh, assessment of nutritional values is related to the physicochemical characteristic of lake water, uh, size of the fishes, gender, physiological activities, and feeding habits, and other uh, influencing factors are composition of the food genome and particularly on environment. No doubt, Nakana Lake harbors commercially important as well as small indigenous fishes, but some periodic anthropogenic activities are happened here. From few years, increase the event of the immersion of the idol into the lake, dyes and colors of the idol change the chemical composition of the water due to siltation, reduce the water storage capacity which affect the physiological activity of the fishes and it vanish the it vanished the spawning ground. Obviously, all these changes altering the biological composition of the fishes. In future, the current study compared with seasonal variation should be continued. I acknowledge, I am grateful to Indian Science Congress, RTM University Nagpur, referral committee, my colleagues, helping hands, and each and every audience of my presentation. Thank you, sir. Now, this talk is open for question from the audience. Yes, sir. What is the size of Tenolisa Elisa? This uh, lake lake size is not big, I think. What is the size of this lake? Uh, sir. You have not mentioned the size in your. Size. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Tenulisha Elisa is no, a no, small what is the size of this sir? lake? First, you answer that question. Okay, sorry, sir. Uh, what is the size of that lake? 100 hectare? No. 500 hectare? I think 2000, uh, sorry, 200. Uh, 200 hectare. 230 okay. th to 35. Okay, 250 hectare at present. Okay. And what is the size of Tenulisha Elisa in this lake? Sir, uh, maximum of it is maximum 2 to uh, 2 2.5 to 3 centimeter that's what that's why it, uh, I, I am asking this question because uh, it's a anadromous fish yes, and sir. it comes from uh, sea, sea to reproduce in fresh water yes tenonisa elisa but yes. your size is too low 2.5 yes. yes, centimeter to 3 centimeter. Yes, if it is sir. correct, you have identified correctly no? that is Tenulisa Elisa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, because the, the, a lot of fishes are just similar to yes, sir. Elisa in non this size. In this size, no, sir. Of, these species are identified by GDSI. Huh? GDSI. Or GDSI find, yeah. find there also in yes, this sir. lake. Yes, okay. sir. But the size is not increasing. This is only this level. Yes, sir. Okay. No, that, okay. that is okay because that is fresh water level because it, if it will increase from this size hmm. it will take at least one year to grow okay more than this size okay, okay sir thank you sir sir can i ma'am yes thank you uh, thank you then the next uh dr fulgen kumar My study is that histological, histopathological assessment of chronic exposure of dichlorvas and uh, fresh water chenna punctatus fish. Dichlorvas, that is a chemical, uh, is an organophosphate compounds. <coughs> and it is used in controlling household and public health and effective against mushroom flies caterpillars and many others and they causes cellular uh, toxification process may be different present in more or general 
well known situation of oxidative stress due to the production of free radicals the free radicals that causes damage surrounding the cytoplasm and other parts of the cells uh, my uh, it was found that after chronic exposure damage values were highest at all the concentration in the histopathological tissues the present study was planned to evaluate histopathological assessment of chronic exposure of dichlorwas the fresh water fish chana punctatus my test organism is fresh water fish that is a chana punctatus chemical that is dichlorwas determination of lc50 is done by probit analysis methods that is 1.26 and sub lethal doses that is a 1/4 of the lc50 and 1/8 of the lc50 1/12 of the lc50 that exposed in different <coughs> concentration after that the tissue uh, after exposure of the chemicals the histological observation we have done in different tissue like gills liver kidney so this is the common procedures that is done for microtomy process first of all we fix the tissue in the fixative that is a formalin after that it washed and then dehydrates after dehydration yes sir okay 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 and observation this is the control gill tissue after exposure uh, 21 days damage in the primary and secondary lively and vascularization also take place this is the picture of control tissue of kidney and is the after 21 days exposure damage in different uh, tissues liver control tissue and liver after chronic days there are damage in hepatocytes and other sites also dichlorwas uh, has not been extensively monitored in most environmental media it has detected in very low concentration in outdoor air but is am detected in higher concentration in indoor air associated with its use as fumigants pesticide in homes or during conventional exposure manufacturing and production facilities it has been detected in drinking waters and no environmental monitoring data were found for dichlorwas in surface or ground water or in soil and sediments dichlorwas has been detected infrequently and never at concentration of calcium in both raw and processed food items dichlorwas has been identified in a at least 3 of this current farmers hazardous waste sites have been proposed in present study exposure of chronic uh, chronic concentration of dichlorwas to fish specimen induce gill liver and kidney damage indicating histopathological toxicity properties of dichlorwas to aquatic organism further there was variability in gills liver and kidney damage between the two tissues of the specimen exposed to the pesticides conclusion the geotropic potential of chronic concentration of dichlorwas found in this investigation suggested a series concern towards its potential danger to aquatic organism and its use in agriculture practices however further studies are needed to explore biological consequences of histopathological damage in channa punctatus after dichlorwas exposure thank you any questions thank you thank you चेयरमैन को चेयरमैन एंड माई सीनियर कलीग्स प्रेजेंट इन दस This is this is my presentation Hilsa Indian site fisheries in downstream Namda estuary decadal analysis of fisher livelihood okay this one okay thank you sir 
So this decadal analysis, it's a totally primary data collected on two occasions in 2008-9 and 2018-19 period. We have selected the persons, fishers from different age group. It's a hierarchy age group, 60 plus, then 55 plus, then 45 plus, 35 plus, and 25 plus. These groups we have taken in our focus group discussion, and after that, this data has come up, and I am showing those data only. Why? Uh, Namda story is important. After Sardar Sarovar Reservoir, this 162 kilometer area of river, it is the downstream area. And in this downstream area, we can, if we can see, there are two species which is very important. In, uh, in from uh, Bharuch town to lower side to up to the sea mouth, it is Hilsa. And upper means uh, dam to Bharuch town, it is. Uh, 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 Macrobacinum rogerbergi, the freshwater escampi. Two species are important here. And this whole period, this study is also very important because this study covers the period pre Sardar Sarovar project, Sardar Sarovar project time, and after Sardar Sarovar dam has got the height of 138 meter, it has completed it just three years back in 2017. I was there on, luckily on that day, I was also there because of some invitation from Sardar Sarovar Namda Nigam Limited. So this, this study covers the five period, means five decades study. And I will just show those things and why it, it is important, I have already discussed. And this is Hilsa fishing is mainly done in the 45 days period of monsoon. And our maximum catch is during the high tide of new moon or no moon period of the month. And mainly the fiber craft at present use, used by the fishers, and five fishers were involved in one boat. So, and if you see the catch, how the catch has declined after the Sardar Sarobar Dam, the, after the establishment of Sardar Sarobar Dam, it was just uh, started from 1994, and you see from 1994 to 2000, how this had changed 2010 period. That time the height was only 121 meter. Now the height has been uh, increased to 138 meter. Again, I have already talked about that and just the parameter wh what I am covering in this fisher household and population, fishing intensity, fishing days, employment from fisheries, fisheries requisite like craft and gear, then fishing practice and season with a special reference to Hilsa and fish catch. In terms of yield per so please skip to the results, sir. You're just no, no, it, it is result only. Methodology is just over. And th why this is also important, D during this five decade, this Janor has come to the zone two. Zone two means the tidal fresh water zone. And which is up to Bharuch was fresh water zone, which has now gone to the fresh water zone is only up to Sisodra. Okay. Now, why this species is important? In monsoon catch, if you see the, in zone 3, it is 98% catch is Hilsa. And in zone 2, it is 47.73% is catch of Hilsa only. Now I come to the uh, result one by one. The fisher population, if you see how they have increased over the years, five decades. This is highly increased in Janur. Janur is especially the belt where the tidal zone starts. And also the Bharvut, Bharvut is the uh, zone where the trade going on. Then the Fisher household, if you see the Fisher household, not in fresh water zone. Fresh water zone is almost stagnant. But you see in uh, this brackish water zone, it has grown uh, massively. This Fisher household also increased. It is 242% population increase in four decades and 135% household increase in last four decades. And if you see the employment from fisheries, it is drastically down from 1978 to 2018 period. But if you see the linear trend of 2018, it is almost stagnant at near about 40 to 50 percent level. Then the craft has also, the craft as well as the gear, both have changed. Now the, uh, at present it is nylon gear and in place of cotton it is nylon gear only and craft has come to from tin to <laughs> and to, so if you see the total fishing days how this has declined over the five decades 
if you see the fresh water area as well as brackish water area it has the except sakarpura because sakarpura is only facing for hilsa no other fishes while in other area all other fishes are fish fishing is done if you come to the fishing days for hilsa it is also slightly declined in 2018 in bharbut region because one reason is there for this decline the sardar sarovar namda nigam limited is only releasing 600 cusec water per day at present which was earlier more than 2000 we have already they have given a, a consultancy cons this is under a consultancy project so they have given also for consultancy for e flow we have suggested for increase this to 2000 cusec per day at present so most probably the water resource ministry of government of india will take action on that then come to fishing hours you see the fishing hours is almost same from janwar janwar the brackish water zone it is almost 12 hour at present from last four decades last four decades it has no change but it has changed in fresh water zone then fishing stretch it is also little bit increasing every 10 year it is increasing because hilsa catch has dwindled hilsa catch has come down and if you see the hilsa catch per boat while it was increasing due to 1978 but the trend line of this you see just the trend line of 2018 it has drastically gone down and if you see the gender dimension of hilsa fishing the initial arrangement is male dominated catching is totally male dominated but after the bank when the hilsa comes to the bank it is totally female dominated the money is kept by female and this is one area i can tell you the fisher women empowerment is more in gujarat because they are keeping all money they are keeping all money not like in uttar pradesh and bihar where the fisher man is keeping all money and they are utilizing for liquor and other things here the whole things are going for their family benefit it is also one of the most important area value chain value chain is also important here because uh, in, in not like calcutta not like calcutta where hilsa is any type of hilsa you can purchase at 1500 rupees kg or 2000 rupees kg in gujarat it is different gujarat 1.1.5 km 1.5 kilo size of female hilsa is almost 2500 plus because single nux hill size sold there single fish not as kilo in gujarat it is totally a grading is different sir this this is last slide sir last slide only so decadal trend of hill sack has shows declining trend the fishing is stretch increased from 5 km 1978 to 30 km 2018 and drastic catch we this is our two study in 2008 uh, and 2010 consultancy project and again 2018 to 20 consultancy project what we found drastically down of catch per unit effort this is now just 17 kg per boat which was earlier 74 kg in just 10 years back within 10 years it has drastically gone down it is one of the reason the the livelihood has gone down drastically changed of all the fishers again the bharbhut and mehgam has emerged as the main landing center in place of bharuch and bharbhut earlier the fishing season has comparatively extended in lower stretches from july to september as compared to upper stretches where it is only hill size not at all available then negligible catch in upper stretches and in income from hilsa fisheries has declined sharply after 98 with the construction of sardar sarovar dam adversely impacted the livelihood of the fisherman community thank you thank you very much this is one lady which is carrying her hilsa for uh, their home purpose the rest all is sold one is for their own cooking purpose thank you thank you very well, much well uh, ganesh is from uh, sifri barakpur okay if you have any questions any inquiry any information okay uh, this session is wide open for the audience huh? if you have anything to ask you can beyond even this talk okay hmm? sir you can ask <laughs> you are the senior most professor here <laughs> dr ragunath is also here <laughs> uh, so, no one is interested to know more so thank you
Perfect. Thank you. This is the pattern. It's a very good presentations are being large in the time. Uh -huh. And now everybody wants to know more, but without the time. I really appreciate the very sincere and broad work that you have done, sir. But it, it should be presented in a larger forum and in the right time. That's and what everybody now they want to present and they want to get the <laughs> Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. For the presentation. Next, uh, Badal Kumar Das is here. This one. Yeah. This one. So good evening, everyone. So respected uh, chairperson, co-chairperson. Distinguished uh, scientists of the session, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Badal Kumar Das from UN Autonomous College, Science and Technology. Now presenting the topic that is mortality studies in pestiferous levicular salty using neem products as plant-derived mollicides. So the background of this uh, particular uh, <coughs> work is levicular salty is the most destructive invasive molluscan paste present in our locality damaging agri horticultural crops and uh, ornamental plants. For that uh, particular species, the molluscan uh, species must be controlled, for which normally the chemicals are going to be used, which are causing environmental pollution, as well as death to the non-target organisms. So this is just a, a particular uh, work to search for eco-friendly, cheaper, and readily available renewable alternative material for controlling that particular snake, for which we have used the plant products as botanical mollusides. So this is the levicular salty, which is causing the damaging effect. The objectives, that means the selection of azadioacta indica, the plant material as a suitable mollicide agent, the standardization of the methodology in the laboratory condition, extracting the phytoproducts from that particular plant, and studies on the impact of selected uh, plant-derived mollicides on the mortality rate of the species, examining the selected materials, particularly of different categories, for study of the mortality, and finally, to analyze the results of the mortality data, depending whether that is uh, uh, relate, related to the concentration as well as the duration of the treatment of that particular species using the fatty products having the toxic in ingredient. This is the exact uh, species, Levically salty. And uh, selecting azure director indica, which is having the respective type of uh, agro-medicinal property and the biopesticide. And it can be very well having the plant material with internal chemical defense, making the neem to be free from pest attack and for which it is used as an efficient pest control strategy. And the functional ingredients of this particular neem is therapeutic anti-inflammatory properties, antibiotic, immunodermatory. It can be used alone or in combination with other herbs. And this is the toxic component of the neem, which is known as azadioctin, which is having 0.1 to 0.3% in the seeds. And the respective toxic constituent is low toxic, low, uh, very low in its toxic potential to the mammals. It is having the complex tetran or triterpenoid limonoids, C35, H44, O6, with bisardial efficiency. And it is similar to that of agitation, which is causing, which is influencing the metamorphosis in case of insects. Other triterpenoids are also there, which are having the bioinsecticide spots. And the preparation of the plant material, that means they have been collected from the respective sources, that means the seed, bark, wood, leaves, etc. They are uh, uh, that cut, cut into small pieces and air dried or sun dried. And they have uh, electronic, use the electric bender and air tight containers, the powder is going to be stored. And the methodology we have used, there are so many methods, but uh, first of all, to uh, uh, have the efficiency of that particular material, we have tested with the dusting method, then spraying, and finally we have standardized the animal immersion technique, which the entire animal is going to be immersed in that particular solution or the extract, and for which the toxicity is going to be resulted because of contact one. And this aqueous preparation is restrictively utilized for 24 hours of duration in its treatment. And additionally, this entire process is also compared with the uh, distilled water as the control uh, environment. Five different concentrations have been taken into consideration. 500 ppm, 1000 ppm, 1500, 2000, 2500. And the death has been completely analyzed after poking the needle in a uh, particular time period of recovery. 
And the observations in the dusting method, the neem board and neem seed has been found to be completely effective, which is causing slime secretion and resulting in the death of that particular animal. They are highly toxic. And neem bark and neem leaf powder, they are not going to be so much toxic. And they are moderately or completely less toxic in the dusting method. These are the results in the dusting method by which the animal is going to be uh, uh, killed in that particular dusting process. But uh, we, are, uh, we have standardized the total, total universal immersion method. Here, aqueous extract of neem powder, powder and as well as the aqueous extract of the neem seed powder, they are causing the immediate slime secretion on the body surface, rapid movement and escaping from the aqueous toxic environment and uh, twisting of the body and sometimes the movement stopped and body becomes paralyzed and the protruded mouth with the tentacle and the animal is dying. And this is highly toxic at the same type of observation is also going to be found in case of uh, seed powder. But in case of aqueous extract of neem bark and neem leaf, the entire uh, survival is beyond also 24 hours. It is also surviving beyond 24 hours, but uh, the exact observation is within 24 hours. These are the results and the observations are like this and we have taken three to five uh, specimens in a particular replicate. This shows the total slog mortality on total immersion using aqueous neem board and seed uh, solution. This is the neem board experimental observation and this is the seed solution and the animal is dying in this particular procedure. And this is the result of the neem bark in aqueous solution and the leaf solution. Here you can see the uh, leaf solution treatment is still giving survivability of that particular animal and it is coming outside and trying to come outside. And these are the graphical representations by which this is the concentration and duration of survivability. When the concentration is increasing, the duration of survivability of that particular animal is just gradually declining. And if the duration of exposure is going to be increased, naturally the percentage of mortality is also going to be increased. This is also same. This is in case of neem bark. And this is the uh, exam, uh, uh, graph which is showing the neem seed, the same type of uh, trend. And in case of the neem leaf, which is completely going to be less effective and the respective duration of exposure is much higher, but still then it is not dying. And finally, the board has been put to be most effective and the respective uh, contribution in form of uh, concentration is also going to increase as well as the respective uh, survivability is also declining. So duration of exposure is also going to be increasing and the percentage of mortality is also increasing. Here, this is the complete graph which is going to give you the idea about the concentration of four different categories, neem board, neem seed, neem bark and neem leaf, which are just giving you the 100% mortality, particularly neem board and neem seed, they are going to give you 100% mortality, whereas leaf is going to be less toxic. And but coming to the discussion, my objective was to uh, finalize the phytomolecular side from the uh, particular neem plant to give you the potential uh, towards the death of the Lavicali salty and the contributions made by scientists like Abu Bakr that it is going to be completely controlling the mode of action which is going to be vital for limiting the toxicity of uh, respective non-target organisms, that is the one point. And another aqueous extract, which is going to be completely contributed by the Henderson 1968, Wilkins and Das myself also. We have already observed the contact toxicity is going to cause slime secretion and the death of that animal out of desiccation. And water extract in case of neem berries, when tested in poultry parts even, within seven days, it is also going to show some sorts of toxicity. And the molluscoidal effect uh, in case of uh, Levicalis and Acadina, Levicalis alti and Acadina folica, whenever the silica particles are coated with botanical pesticides like neem, currant, and tobacco, neem has given some sorts of effect where tw within 24 hours there is the observation of act inactivation, body fluid loss, and the death out of desiccation. And the effect of the neem leaf in case of Acadina, Acadina also, the leaf is going to be completely proved as the uh, destructive uh, material which is going to kill the snail. The molecular property in case of limnia acuminata endoplanovis exigestus is going to observe the respective uh, increase in form of either the time or the concentration, either the time or the dose dependent, it is increasing. And the present investigation is having the result that both the board and seed, they have been proved to be completely uh, influential over the bark and leaf whenever they have been used in form of aqueous extract solution. And this is exactly increasing and the duration of exposure is also related to that one. And my concluding remark is that mortality studies is going to be the basic tool to evaluate the toxicity whenever considering the lethal and sublethal concentrations, particularly using either any kind of chemical molecide or the plant molecides. And in present induction, what I have already told, that is exactly the intoxicated environment or the complete controlled environment. It is increasing in increasing concentration as well as the duration of treatment. So the future prospects are estimation of the exact lethal concentration to find out the phytoplankton neem, which is going to be eco-friendly or cost-effective alternative to the chemical molecides, and the toxic potential has to be 
completely evaluated prior to its implementation and started its standardization of the technique for the respective integrated pest, pest management practice and for the rural farmers they are going to be completely uh, 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 implement the respective neem plant products in their locality to protect the crops and plants particularly in our locality even this is a, a, a suggestion for the respective individuals and I am very much uh, thankful to the uh, president, uh, governing body of the North Most College and the principal for giving me this opportunity. And uh, these are the respective okay. re references. Thank you, Dr. Badal Kumar Das. Huh? Thank you. You are running at a speed of more than 100 kilometers. <laughs> uh, very quick, but you know, we have ca time constraint. It is around 8.30 today. Okay. okay? okay. But anyway, your okay. talk is very informative. Okay. And uh, in spite of uh, high speed and quick succession of words, okay, sir. things are audible. Okay. So, any question from the audience? There is no question, so thank you very much. Sir, thank you, sir. And last presentation is there. Just have a patience for five, ten minutes more. Which one? Dr. Abhay Shelke. Okay. Please come, gentlemen, and uh, do a favor on all of us. Okay. Just conclude your talk within five minutes. Yes, sir. Thank you. PP2. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Don't know. Respected Chair, Respected Dignitaries, Myself, Dr. Abhay Shalke, Department of Zoology, PPR Science Commerce College, Chalish Gaon, KBC, North Maharashtra University, Jalpa. Title of my paper is Evaluation of Oxidative Stress Caused by Silver nanoparticles in zebra fish dinuvaridio. Objective was to study the chronic effect of silver nanoparticles on antioxidant enzyme like catalase, superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, reduced glutathione activity, lactate dehydrogenase, and lipid peroxidase, peroxidation activities in liver, gill, and muscle tissues in adult zebra fish dinuvaridio. One objective was to evaluate the oxidative stress of silver nanoparticles in the zebra fish Danube radio, to study the oxidative stress related behavior of Danube radio in chronic exposure of silver nanoparticles. Silver nanoparticle suspension preparation characterization, silver nanoparticles powder which having 6 to nanometer diameter coated with polyvinyl vinyl pyridine with a purity of 99.5% was purchased from Indian Platinum Private Limited, Ville Parley West Mumbai. PUP coated silver nanoparticles were chosen as they should easily disperse in water. The morphology average diameter and dispersion of silver nanoparticles were determined with a field emission scanning electron microscopy, FSM, at University Institute of Chemical Technology, KBC North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon. Powder sample of silver nanoparticles were used for electron dispersion X-ray spectroscopy Analysis and XR. Yes, ma'am. So these are the images of characterization of silver nanoparticles. In the acute toxicity study, adult fish Danube radio. Yes. This is the experimental fish zebra fish Danube radio. This is the behavior study that I have observed during the experimental. These are the methodologies I have used for this study. These are the results. Catalyst activity in zebra fish Danube area exposed to silver nanoparticles during 21 days. And you can observe this. There is a, there is a decrease in the catalyst activities in the liver, gill, muscle, tissues of zebra fish Danube area. These are the graphical representation. It indicates clearly 
there is a decrease in the catalyst activity. SOD, that is superoxide dismutase activity, Danube radio exposed to silver nanoparticles. There is also increase in the SOD in the liver gill muscle tissues of Jabrabi's Danube radio. These are the graphical representation, it clear indicates that. GPX, that is the glutathione peroxidase activity in the Jabrabi's Danube radio exposed to silver nanoparticles. In the tabular, you can see that there is a increase in the GPX. This is the graphical representation. Reduced glutathione activity in a Danube radio, you can see there is a decrease in the reduced glutathione activities in the liver gill muscles of Danube radio. There is a significant decline in the reduced glutathione activity. Lactate dehydrogenase activity in Danube radio, there is also increase in the LDH in the liver gill muscles of Danube radio. This is the graphical representation. Lipid peroxidation activity in the Danube radio exposed to silver nanoparticles. There is also decrease, uh, there is also increase in the lipid peroxidation activities. This is the graphical representation. These are the results. I am. It's a negative impact, sir. That's what yes, yes. It's it's too much negative impact, sir. Yes, sir. Is it present in the water? Uh, yes, sir. Co co coming it? era is uh, okay. nanotechnology era. Okay. And when the nano nanoparticle base product will come in the in the market, okay. then all these scraps will be come into pressure water reservoir and that, that directly come into food chain and food web. And in coming future era, we will be the part of this. Okay. Might be you are the first person to say about this. Yes, sir. <laughs> Any more questions? So thank you, Dr. Abhay. Thank you, sir. And thank, thank you, audience. Thank you. The thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank Dr. M. G. Ragnathan, Dr. Ganesh, Professor A. M. Saktena. Only three persons left in the audience. And of course, my team, uh, Jainti and this lady, what's the good name? Kareem, you? Saloni, Tiwari. Okay, wonderful. Then, madam? Mangala Thakre, all Mangala, Saloni, and Kareem. I thank you very much. Yeah, Thanks to all. I am grateful to you. And the last three persons left with us <laughs> MG Raghunathan Sahib, person. camera persons, my friend. What's the good name, sir? Girish, and this photographer. Nishikant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I am. Thank you. Huh? Thank you very much. Now I request Jaiswal sir to felicitate uh, Dr. Ulfat Jan ma'am. Now I request Jaiswal sir to felicitate Professor Yahya Bakhtiyar sir.
भैया इनको ठंडी नहीं लगती तो क्या पहना है शॉल Now we are moving towards the oral presentation. For this session, we have uh, nine oral presentation. Uh, Dr. Professor S. P. Trivedi sir and Dr. Dr. J. Jayanti ma'am are the chairperson and co-chairperson for this session. Now I request chairperson and co-chairperson to proceed the session ahead. <laughs> 